Hi guys, today's video is going to be about setting up the CC3D and completing the rest of the physical build of the QAV250. Here you can see me installing the 2000 kV Luminear motors. Use the provided steel screws to attach each of the motors to each of the arms. Now connect each of the wires from the motors to the free cables coming from the ESCs. It doesn't matter which order you put these in as we will change these later on. Now install the CC3D flight controller inside the quad. Here I'm attaching mine inside the quadcopter using 3M double sided tape. If you're not sure which way to put in the flight controller, just remember that the USB always faces to the rear. Now let's plug in the servo cables from our ESCs. We're going to take the cable from the front left motor and plug it into the first prong on the flight controller. Then our front right motor and plug that into the second prong of the flight controller. Then the third one is the right rear motor. Plug this into the third prong. And then our final motor, which is the left rear, plug that into the last prong. Here I've used the zip tie to hold all the cables together, making it a bit more neater. The receiver that I'm using for this quad is the Futaba R6208SB, which is a little bit overkill for this small quadcopter considering its price, so I will be swapping this out at a later date for a cheaper receiver. Now plug in the coloured cables coming out of the CC3D flight controller into your receiver. This is how I have mine set up for the Futaba. The servo cable that has red, white and black is plugged into port 1. Then I have blue into 2, yellow into 3, green into 4, red into 5 and black into port 6. I'll put a link in the description to the Luminea website so you can set this up depending on your receiver. Ok guys, as you can see I've now got this CC3D plugged into my receiver. Uh, all I've done with my Futaba is select a new model. So uh, if I go around to here and go in, you can go to new and select a new one. Uh, as you can see I already have here so I'm just going to pre-select this again. Um, uh, the only changes that I've, I've made is to go into the menu and go to function and then I've actually gone down and set 5 and 6 so I've set 5 gear to switch B and 6 VPP to switch C so I'm going to use this as my flight control switch so let's back out of here okay let's start setting up our CC3D so uh, what you first need to do is download the CC3D um, ground station so uh, I'll put a link in the description for that once you've got it and installed it then we can actually run it okay what we're going to do initially is set up our vehicle so we'll go to vehicle setup wizard choose this ensure you don't have any props on at this time go to next then what we need to do is using the cable it's similar to uh, the GoPro type cable which you will normally charge your GoPro up or plug into your computer uh, this is going to plug into the CC3D flight controller so have that ready, click on upgrade, you'll see the uh, blue line start going across the screen and whilst it's doing that, plug the USB cable in and it will start updating the firmware version that's on there. Once that's done, click on next, just wait a moment while this finds itself, there we go. Click on next, because I've got all the cables in, I'm going to choose this first option here, PWM, go to next, uh, we're going to be using this on a multi-rotor, and you can see the orientation of uh, which way the props are going to spin here, uh, this being the front of the craft. 
Um, we're going to leave this on uh, turbo PW PWM 400 Hz and uh, we're going to give that, that a go, see what happens. Click next. This just is an overview. Okay, now what we need to do is click calculate and leave the quad perfectly still on the table. Make sure you don't bang it or shake it. Let it do its uh, calibration. <coughs> okay, all calibrated. And go to next. Okay, what we need to do here is actually plug in our uh, free cell LiPo that we're going to use on the uh, craft itself. So again, make sure you don't have any props on at this time and plug in the cable. So now everything's powered up. Okay, click next. Now we need to set the output calibration for each of the motors. So this is going to be the front of our craft here. Uh, we're going to calibrate the first motor first. Sorry, the top right motor. So what we do, we click start and then we're going to bring this slider up until the motor starts. So there we go, we can hear that motor spinning. And then I'm going to click stop, go to next and do the same for motor 2 which is the front right. Click start, bring it up until it starts to spin. Click stop. Motor 3, the same again. Click stop. And finally motor 4. And click stop. You can also check the rotation now. Whilst these are spinning round, you can see on the actual uh, ground station itself, you can see which way it's actually supposed to be spinning. If your um, motor is spinning the wrong way, all you need to do is undo uh, two of any of the cables from the ESC to the motor that's spinning the wrong way, undo them and swap them around, and that will make the motor spin the opposite direction. So we're going to click next and save our settings. That's that done. Then we're going to go and set up our radio. So I'm going to click on that. The motors are going to be disarmed during this time. Okay, we're going to click next. We're going to choose acro. Click next. Mode 2 is what I'm used to flying in, so we're going to set that up. Click next. Now on your radio, we're going to use the uh, throttle and lift it up and down like it says to. Then we're going to move our roll stick to the right and to the left, let go. Then our pitch stick up and down, let go. Then our yaw to the right and to the left and let go. Now we're going to toggle our flight switch before I said we're going to use switch C so I'm going to toggle this. Accessory, I'm just going to switch on switch B for now. Accessory stick 1, we're not going to use that, so I'm going to click next. Accessory stick 2, we're not going to use that, click next. Now we need to center all of our uh, sticks and our flight control buttons, so put them all in the center and press next. Now we need to set the endpoints by moving all of our sticks to the endpoints. And the same for the switches, all the way to the bottom, all the way to the top. You'll see it actually moving on the screen in real time as well. So from one end to the other. Once that's done, press stop. Oh, sorry, press next. Now this gives you a live view of your control. So if I move my throttle up and down, we can see that it's actually moving up and down. Our pitch and roll is fine, our rudder is fine. If we move our switch for our flight mode, you can see that's toggling on the top right hand side. And our accessory again uh, still moves. If any of these are backwards, uh, moving the wrong way, then you can actually uh, reverse them using the um, selections at the top. Okay, we're going to click next. Um, these uh, settings have not been saved to the board yet, so we'll go to the bottom right and press save. Okay, we're now saved. Click next. Now that we're going to choose how to arm the motors. Uh, once you turn this, um, <coughs> sorry, once you plug it in, the you don't want the motors to be armed in case, in case you've got the throttle uh, slightly up because it'll take off. So what I tend to do is go to always armed and make it your right arming timeout is 30 seconds so that basically means once you've armed it it's going to be stay armed for 30 seconds uh, you can change that if you wish to simply like this 
So what we do, arming the um, machine to arm it, as I say, we've put it on right, uh, your right, so uh, once I've plugged the battery and I'm ready for a fly, I'll move the stick all the way to the right and hold it there, and the LED on the flight controller will change to start flashing to say we are armed, and then I can obviously throttle up and start taking off. So I'm going to click save on that, and that's the uh, RC side of things done. Uh, the only thing left to do is to um, change all of the uh, stabilization. So we click on stabilization on the left here, go to advanced. Now we're going to start changing all these values on here to suit this uh, particular quad. Uh, I'll go through these uh, quickly but I will put a link in the description uh, to a picture so you can um, actually take your time, look at them and input these values yourself. So the first one I'm going to set at 75, so uh, click here, I can actually highlight it and go 75, enter. Uh, the second one here is going to be 75 again, 75, enter. And the yaw we're going to have at 180, 180, enter. Okay guys, so rather than sit here and watch me input all these values, there's a link in the description to a screenshot of them so you can input them at your leisure. The actual values being used were set up by Juice 70 who's one of the best FPV pilots around. Now you will find that this is uh, quite a nippy little quadcopter and maybe these values won't suit you personally, but it just takes a little bit of time and you get used to it and you've got yourself a nice fast mean little machine. Don't forget once you've done all your values to click save in the bottom right hand corner there. This is only the basics to get your quadcopter up in the air. Of course, if you go through the program, there's a lot more things you can tune and change, uh, but I'm not going to go into that in this particular video. So once you've followed all these instructions and click save, you can power cycle your quadcopter, and then we're all ready for our maiden flight. So as I showed in the setup, my motors are disarmed until I yaw to the right. Once you've armed the motors, you will notice that the LED on the flight controller starts to flash quite quick. Normally the motors wouldn't spin up like that, but after arming I accidentally lifted the throttle slightly. So this is uh, the maiden flight of the QAV250, as you can see it's quite lively. It is a small little thing and it is getting puffeted around by its own prop wash in this small indoors environment. Just remember that once you have landed and put your throttle all the way down to zero that the motors will stay armed depending on how many seconds you set them to stay armed in the system. You can actually disarm them yourself by yawing to the right, that's how I've got mine set up to yaw to the right to arm and yaw to the right to disarm. I'll just show you a little bit more of my setup. The battery I'm using is the 1300 milliamp free cell zippy compact. As you can see, I've got the CC3D mounted inside the small case there just to protect it. I've got my Futaba mounted up at the front instead of an FBV camera. For my FBV and recording camera, I'm using the Mobius HD camera. As you can see, the cable comes out and then goes into an Immersion RC 600 milliwatt transmitter. I'm using the 5 volts that comes out of that transmitter to actually power the Mobius camera, so I don't have to worry about charging it. I've set a timer of 4.5 minutes on my Futaba transmitter, so I know to come in and land. For extra security, I've added in a permanent LiPo alarm. This is actually soldered in onto the main power distribution board and when voltage starts to get low it gives me an audible sound. This should also prove handy if I happen to crash my quadcopter somewhere and I'll use that sound to be able to find it. Anyway that's all for this video now guys, I do appreciate you watching, if you haven't already please subscribe. For you guys that like contests, I will be announcing one very soon and you don't even need a quadcopter to enter. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, if you want to watch another video of mine, click one of the ones that are on screen now.